Uh. Ladies and gentlemen, we're back again. How are you? How's everybody doing? I hope everybody is safe and sound in this precarious times that we live in. That's right. Once again, we have another combination of the Nerd Generation along with Egghead Entertainment or Egghead News. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm the uh, pitcher for the day. One of the best. Straight out of Alabama. No, I'm only kidding. New York City, born and bred. Ladies and gentlemen, I am here with the founder of uh, Nerd Generation. What's going on, man? You, you know, I didn't even get to put in the pitch in in, in, in the intro because I thought you had said something. Did you say something? No, I said you, you're one of the best. <laughs> oh, oh, I was like, I thought, it was, I, thought, <laughs> I thought it was the gaffer. You know, these gaffers, nah, you can't nah, do anything. Nah. You know, that's right, the gaffers, you know, you got to watch them. They break light bulbs when we're on the set. No, we're not on the set. But once again, ladies and gentlemen, before we even get into this, there's a little entertainment tidbit, and I, I'll talk about how people feel about these audio podcasts because I got some very good uh, tear-jerking and heartfelt uh, wishes, and people like the fact that we're doing this. And it's taken away from the it's taken away from the obvious. No one's ever gonna know the obvious. We're not gonna ignore the obvious and we will support and do everything we can to make sure that we are respectful, courteous, and remindful of the situation that we're all in. But anyway, ladies and gentlemen, I'm gonna give him a good intro, whether he likes it or not. Over to the right. To the left, right, he's on the other side of the water. Pablo, say Tarcelano, Pete, what's going on? Hey. Hey, man, what's going on, man? Oh, we know what's going on. I think every whole world knows what's going on, and we're just dealing yeah. with it, like I said before. And we wish yeah. everyone to be healthy, healthy, safe. And we appreciate the fact that um, we did a little uh, podcast a little while ago, and it, it was something we just threw out there just to keep the airways fresh with our, our brand of uh, media focus and our brand of uh, genre focus. We appreciate to everyone and, and the people that follow us and support us and everything else. But now, ladies and gentlemen, the topic tonight on this Sunday night is the one and only, that's right, Deadpool. Deadpool, Ryan Reynolds, is entering the MCU. If you didn't know, uh, Disney bought Fox, 20th Century Fox. And if you didn't know that, it must be nice wherever you are, but you have to come back to the real world. But that's right. Fox, uh, Fox was purchased by uh, Disney, and they they were able to absorb all of their Fox Marvel characters. But that's going down the hill, and that's since Avengers Endgame, and we already knew, and we were speculating. But, Pete, let's get to the whole point. Ryan Reynolds, Deadpool. There's a little articles being circulated, rumors, as they call it in the business. Rumors are circulating that, guess what? There might have been some conversation to, you know what? Ryan, maybe we should just, unfortunately, the best thing for us, Disney, MCU, is we start all over. P, how do you feel about that? At first, because of the success that Deadpool had on its own, right? It uh -huh. I felt it would have been not so much difficult, but it would have been a risk to change up whatever was already established as successful. You know, people like that. The numbers proved it, you know? Deadpool was one of the first movies. Okay, I, I, I see what, I see what yeah, you're saying. Deadpool right. okay, was one of the saying. first movies that uh, started this ascension of rated R comic book films and it doing the numbers. Or can we say... That is doing. Or Pete, can we say it's the first movie that Fox got right? Yeah, because it wasn't with their input. This was all Ryan Reynolds. I... I Am I am I fair to say? That's uh, you, not even fair. You 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 you're being generous. You're being very generous. Uh, you, you, you hit it right on the head. This was the first one that they got right. And I know you're gonna get. I know we're gonna get criticism. I know we're gonna get criticism. But this is the first ever since Nightcrawler and X Men Two with that opening, which is still one of the top five all time. But other than that. This is the this is the first one they ever got yeah, right. And, this and, one's well, right. No complaints. Check this out. What came after that? Logan, uh, the, the Joker. Uh, then you got Warner Brothers' cheap attempt into trying to copy the same formula and uh, do it their own way, and they oh failed. Oh God! But anyway, oh God! Did he say? But but, <laughs> but, but, oh but anyway, you know. Deadpool uh, was the, the one that started it off, man. You know, you could say Blade. That is you true. could say Blade was was certainly the beginning. 
right? Oh, yo, yeah, oh, of course. But, Hands down, but Deadpool dog, was the man. one that said to the naysayers, no, we can't do big numbers. Watch. Right? And they did and, it. And they did it. Horror and genre. They did it. And they did it. So it would have been difficult for Kevin to to change that up. But he realizes that what he's doing and what they've done doesn't quite go together. They have to there sort of start there it is. new. You know, they have there to it do it. And I don't mind that, but this also tells me this. There is only one sheriff in town, and that's Kevin Feige. That's it. That's not it. Robert Downey, not uh, Ryan Reynolds, oh. not wow. Ed Norton, not Terrence Howard. And he also has a plan. He yes, also has yes, a plan. Yes. So I don't mind. So I don't mind. He's the second iteration to Marvel of Stan Lee. And they can say whatever you want. As far as Marvel's media, which is TV, television, films, and... He's the Stan Lee. I mean, this man is creating a universe that, that has an appeal. I mean, anybody can come out and try to do that. This man's creating a universe that has mass appeal, and that's, that's the biggest thing. It has mass appeal, and people say, why does he have mass appeal? Because he's following the formula. He's one of the first people to not want to come in with a bulldozer, P, P if you get, and just let me I have the character, I have the name, I have their powers, but let me come in and me bulldoze this away, let me bulldoze that away, and not because the stuff is bad, it's just that I want to put my mark or I want to put my impression. This is the, this man said, no, blankety blank is blank, blankety blank is going to be blank. I'm not he's like I'm not trying to change the formula, I just want to be able to actually show it. And that's where he won. The simplest way for, for, for us to put it, plain and simple, is that Kevin Feige is, he is a comic book fan, number one. And number two, what he is yeah. doing is bringing these characters to life. He is not reimagining yeah. them. Yeah. So far Thanks, that is. they're not recognizable. No bulldozers. Thank you. No bulldozer. I'm not here to destroy things and try to pretend I invented the Joker. No, I didn't. I'm not trying to change Bill Finger and 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 Bob Kane's character. I mean and, and, and Pete. I understand it's also egos. Yeah. I understand well guess what? We own the licensing. You sold us the film rights. Uh, oh we, we 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 get to do whatever we want. I mean you could take that premise and that attitude, but now ladies and gentlemen you have to go back. Before Marvel, before the MCU, who else was actually successful? Honestly, on on levels of the MCU, nobody was. Let's let hey, nobody was making billions. No one was making billions, even with Spider Man, the first Spider Man to make a billion dollars. I'm sorry to say, and you could do hey, you could do cost of inflation, of course, but the first Spider Man was 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 far from home, and should far from home have made a billion? No, because we've already seen Spider Man to death. But I put him with Iron Man. I put him in the MCU. What do you think the hook was, boys and girls? And I'm not giving away the secret sauce. What do you think the hook is? Let's, P, let's call it like it is. What's the hook? What's the secret sauce? They're in the MCU. And even Stoney was smart enough to go, they're in the MCU. That's the secret sauce. Now, the other guy across the street, his creators and so on and so forth said, well, I'm not going to be like them. I'm not going to be like them. Well, okay. You weren't. That's why the ship is unsteady. The ship is rocky. That's why we got a subpar suicide squad. But it still made money. And you don't know it made money because the fans, and I, uh, Warner Brothers DC, and I guess basically at t the fans will still support you, but you got to treat them better than this. You know what they did, yo, sort of? They, 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 created films that have been so polarizing that you have all this negative energy, man. And all we want is these characters from the, the comic books to come to life, not this crazy and all over the place sort of scenario that we're getting. We, sh we should all love these films, but we don't. Why? Because for me, they're unrecognizable. They're glimpses of, 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 of 
what we want to see. But in terms of their character and who they are and why they do what they do, they haven't been able to portray that in these films. And it's a mess. And it's a mess because you don't know where it's going. I appreciate the good films. I appreciate the good films, but we, we got to do more. There's so much more you can do, man. And you're just simply not doing it. Two people over at Warner Brothers in D.C. seemingly, seemingly had got it right. Patty Jenkins and Mr. James Wan with Aquaman. Aquaman was a shocker. Patty Jenkins was a straight home run. Yeah. But as far as that's concerned, maybe with the addition of Mr. James Gunn and Mr. J.J. Abrams, who, that's right, boys and girls, I downloaded uh, Star Wars, which was a gift from Disney, I guess, to help us through these uh, precarious times. But Mr. J.J. Abrams seems to be able to put A and B together. I don't know how much... I don't know how much uh, ingredients he's going to put into it. I mean, I think J.J. works very quickly. He puts something together very quickly. He doesn't uh, harm anything. He doesn't set things on yeah, fire. Yeah, but this is and the thing. And maybe that's a downfall. Yes, yes. You said it right there. That is the downfall. His thing is... Maybe that's... Is, yeah. If you saw the Star Trek films and you saw the beginnings of what he he wrote out this Star Wars, this next... Um, uh, trilogy of Star Wars films that he gave us they were nostalgic but that's about it that's about JJ's by the book yeah man he's by the book like come on man he's safe yeah he's, he's, he's too safe, safe. <laughs> he's too safe and he's like he's I don't want to see safe there it is ladies and gentlemen he's too safe he's too safe yeah he's, I'm pretty sure wow. he can do great things with Superman I'm pretty sure he can get us there but yeah he can get us yes he can get us there with Superman he really could Take some inspiration of the great ones. The first Superman, Superman 77 and uh, Superman 2. Right? 79? Listen, the best, listen, at night, uh, Superman 77, I still plug it in it, and I still it, watch it. That first 15 minutes still, is the greatest in cinematic it, it history. It still gives me goosebumps, man, when I watch that film. It still. Because it's like, wow. I actually it's thought wild. I was on Krypton. I thought I was on Krypton. I'm sorry. It just captures you. Yeah. You're in. Period. Yeah. And, you know, and, and it's funny. The TV shows now have bigger budget than they had back in 1977. But that 1977, with that dome, Krypton, the glass planet, the marble planet, the, the crystal planet, whatever you, technology yeah. you want to say the Kryptonian Jews. But it was, it, it was, it was. But once you saw yeah, it. It was the music, the way he, the way in. he was introduced, the, how, how that hint of goody two shoes arrogance was in him. But he was a good guy. Right? You know, he, he, I think, he, I think I'm going to watch he, it again. I'm going to watch that again. He's corny boy. in terms of, you know, it's like, he, but he's, you know, he's a good guy. He's one of those guys that you, you know, he does the right thing. Sort of like Cap. I don't, I, we, we, <laughs> I we, we didn't get that from super, this version. It's Henry Cavill, as far as no. appearance, looks fantastic. But yes. the way they wrote it and, and the direction that they went just didn't work for me. No depth. No depth to Superman. But let, let's swing back around because we can get lost in yeah. the DC trail. <laughs> but this is also but this also but this is also good fodder on the uh on the audio. But let's get back. Ryan Reynolds and I will say this. You you, you, you make your statement. I would say from a production and also from a creative standpoint, I am now in throwing the MCU into another phase. Mm -hmm. I'm introducing Shang Chi, Sword, Aim, Hydra's coming back again. I'm introducing all these elements. We might get Spider Woman. We are getting the She Hulk, Moon Knight. We are getting the little girl known as Miss Marvel, uh Miss Miss I can say Miss Reed Richards. She's basically elastic and she could stretch just like Reed does, but we don't wanna you know, we wanna throw that around anyway. But I would say, Ryan, the best thing for you to do going forward into the future of the MCU, because we can't have you do Deadpool three <laughs> and it be like the last Fox movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, let's do let's do Deadpool, and we won't even call it Deadpool three. Let's just do Deadpool. Deadpool's into the MCU. Thank you for allowing me to introduce Colossus and Juggernaut and Cable and all of the characters that you used while it was well, before it was uh, 20th Century Fox. Mm -hmm. Now, Kevin Feige, Louisa, and Lou get to introduce those mutant characters the, the way that they want to. Not, not, Pete, not being forced. If I would have kept up with your threat, it would have been forced. Uh, yeah, I agree 100%. But the distinction that I want to make with the Deadpool franchise, 
or the re and the reboot of it. You know, Ryan Reynolds people made these Deadpool's. The characters were great. Colossus, Juggernaut. Okay. They they did that very well. The first the first okay. movie, the, the first storyline was fantastic. The second one, it was a little bit lackluster for me. I, I just felt like I was hearing the remix of the first dope song. You know yeah, what I'm saying? I think the second one. <laughs> you know? The, the second and, and, one and it wasn't that great as the, as, the, as the original. Yeah, he, he put it back in the bottle. He put it back in the bottle. And we're going to go forward and we're going to introduce Ryan. And we get to come up with some type of Deadpool that is still Deadpool, but he can also fit into the MCU. Yeah. Or, or basically, he can fit into Disney, and we can see where we're gonna go and what we're gonna allow. It's all, hey, hey, boys and girls, hey, it's all business. It's all business. We want to, hey, we want to keep Ryan Reynolds around here for about another good ten years playing this character. Um, I just think it's a smart move. I just think that it keeps the direction and management of these characters within the hands of Mr. Feige and crew. Yeah. Continuing the last thread, you would have basically taken away his X-Men. There's no if ands, or doubts about yeah. it. Deadpool introduced key characters of the X-Men. Yeah. Now, if you're Kevin Feige, and I just got this stuff back, Disney spent all this money, no, we have to introduce the mutants. I'm sorry. Yeah. We have to. We cannot. That's a business move. Yeah. We cannot. And you know how they work. It all has to be threaded in. It all has to be together. That mutants have to meet with the Eternals, have to meet with the Fantastic Four, have to meet with Tony, have to meet with, we have to keep it all in house. Yeah. What the guys do across the street, that's their business with stuff being all over the page and all over the timeline. Uh, supposedly that Supergirl movie is going to be set in the 1970s. You know what? Best of luck yeah. with that. But anyway. It's just, it's just, that's when I, crazy when, when, when across when the I street. think about it. <laughs> <laughs> but I think when I think about listen, is, when I think crazy. about what Kevin Feige has accomplished and what he wants to do, it's like the inter the interdependencies oh, yeah. of these films. They they all have yeah. to be at least good and reference something that happened in other yeah. films to to feel like wow, you're part of a bigger story. You're just watching these little parts of it that it all. It's just genius, and, 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 and it takes a lot of discipline. It, it's it like, takes a lot of discipline to do something like it's that. It's like the comic books. It's just like the comic books. Yeah. You're part yeah. of the narrative, and then you got limited. So yeah, but the guys across the street said, <laughs> no, we're just going <laughs> to put stories out. <laughs> and I can, I, let me ask you a question. Is this safe to say we don't want to make judgments for anybody? But as a general audience member, and I've asked other people who do not know the genre, who do not anything, but they know television, and they know what they like to watch, and they know soap, soap, soap opera yeah. material, and they know threat from threat. Isn't the MCU so much easier to follow mm -hmm. than to follow the different, various different stories across the street? Yeah. Across the street is up and down time streams, up and down. I think Kevin Feige and the MCU destroyed that of just accepting anything. They've yeah. given you a well oiled driven machine. machine and I think by the I think by the billions of dollars that these movies are turning out I think the public likes it <laughs> I th I, I'm, I'm, maybe I'm guessing I, maybe I'm guessing by the box office but I mm. think the public likes an organized machine yeah uh, sorry you know I'm, I'm only going by the numbers and now mm. I see everyone on, on YouTube and everything else is saying the same thing that um, you know we should restart Deadpool. I don't think we actually had a choice. I don't think they had a choice. But anyway, please look out for us and more content as we will continue to persevere as we always do and as we must do during these uh, precarious times as I've heard it said so many times on so many shows. But um, we're glad uh, for the support and uh, we will still here, still be here to... Uh, Translate whatever information and news that comes out in the entertainment media. Uh, we like the genre. We love the genre. I think you guys already know that. Penny, uh, what to say to the uh, people listening to the podcast? Nah, man. Continue listening to us, man. We got a lot of good stuff to say. Uh, we really thoughtful about the stuff that we say, and we again, like she said, we we really love the genre. 
and uh, is is it it has brought so, uh, it has brought us an escape uh, vehicle for us, you know, to 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 yeah to wonder again and and and, and enjoy yeah stuff that we yeah. like. So uh, I thank Kevin for that. And, and Disney and for them making the right decisions and keeping this man on top of the ship, you know? And, yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. And again, stay safe out there. You know, be careful. You know, think about your family. Think about other people, man. Don't be selfish. If you know you're sick or you're not feeling good, don't go out and start spreading this. You know, it doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense. Don't worry. Don't think about only yourself. There's a lot of people out there who are susceptible of dying from this stuff. You know, so yeah, you know, and you know, that's the truth. Everybody, it. people can get it, but for some people, it will pass just like a regular flu. Some people, it'll be a little bit more dangerous. So let's always keep that in mind. And I'm sure we'll, we'll persevere. It's going to take us a minute, but we'll get it. We'll get the uh, engine going and we'll be right back at it. So once again, now thank you for AKED News, AKED Entertainment, and of course, the Nerd Generation. We'll talk to you soon. Thank you.